I'm preparing for a meeting. I know you're mad at me, but you didn't mean that I could never come by and see you, <laughs> ever. Is this about something in particular? Well, I was just starting to realize how few friends I've made since I came back to Springfield. You didn't come here to discuss what friends you may or may not have here in Springfield, so why don't you get to the point? <sighs> Daddy, I can't take it anymore. You've got to forgive me, please. Oh, no. Gordon, get me Sam McCullers in Dallas. I have to talk to him. Yeah, I'm afraid so. What? I don't want to see him. Too late, Vanessa. I made it past the palace guard. <sighs> Never mind, Gordon. I'll deal with it. Can I help you, Roger? I hope so. What is it you want? I'm worried about Dinah. I'll worry about my daughter, thank you. She was devastated by what happened between you. you. She feels she's got nowhere to turn. She told you that? That and more. Donna is none of your business. Well, she did come to me for help, very much as she did at the Fifth Street Ball after all that money disappeared. What's your game, Roger? Why are you so interested in my daughter? Why do you always assume the worst about me? It's a safe assumption. You're usually after something. Well, all I'm after this time is your daughter's well-being and happiness. I'm a parent, too. And I'm very busy this morning. No one can hurt you more than your own child. I know that firsthand. I also know that your first interest was to teach Dinah a lesson, but that can backfire. My relations with my daughter are entirely private. I've been where you are with my son. I can help. The situations are in no way comparable. Losing right? heart was the worst thing that ever happened to me. I haven't lost Dinah. You will if you don't ease up. Look, I told Hart that he was cut off, that he was on his own. That was two years ago. I haven't seen him in all this time. When I finally caught up with him in Canada, he ran from me. Well, forgive me for saying it, Roger, but, uh... A lot of people run from you. I love my son every bit as much as you love your daughter. Not a day goes by that I don't miss him, that I don't think about him, worry about him, regret having been too hard on him. Dinah knows that I love her. She knows why I did what I did. I, I'm trying to help How, her. Wait, wait, wait. I'm trying How did she to know teach all her... this stuff? Because you told her? Those are just words to her. She didn't see the hell that you were going through during her kidnapping. I did. Oh. Oh, now I understand. You think that I still owe you something, don't you? Are you deliberately misunderstanding me? Look, if you think that I owe you something, fine. You come to me directly, but don't... Don't you try and get at me through my daughter, ever. Do you understand me? Um, I'll just wait right over there. Thank Good. you. You know where to find me. <laughs> He's a little protective of me these days. Well, I don't blame him for not trusting me. He did walk out in the middle of your wedding ceremony. Well, you were worried about your father. Yeah. I wasn't very loyal to you, though. Grandma Barbara called me on it, and she was right. I shouldn't have gone after Dad. I'm surprised you let her get to you. She is very old-fashioned. I, I know, but she was right. So that is why I came over here as soon as I heard you were back. I wanted to apologize. Hmm. Apology accepted. Why, why aren't you making this harder on me? Why should I? You were torn between your parents at that moment. You had to pick one or the other. And let's face it, you have always been daddy's little girl. Stop with this nice, 
forgiving act, Mom. I, I, I can't deal with this Mother Teresa thing. Honey, I don't see the point in going over the same old ground about you and your father and me. All of our lives, we've been playing this little game when it comes to Dad. I want it to stop. For once, would you tell me what you really think? I'm a big girl, Mom. I can take it. I'm sorry, Daddy. I didn't mean to come across like a drama queen or anything. I, I, I can't handle it. I, I'll be fine. I'm glad to hear that. Yep, totally fine. Except for maybe a few jitters about the rent. Um, uh, I'm hoping that Mother will reconsider and give me my job back at, at Lewis Oil. Did she say anything to you? No, not about your job. Hmm. Uh, how much time does a landlord give you before you're evicted? That depends. How far behind are you? Three weeks. But I'll figure something out. Yes, I know. This is the point where I'm supposed to jump in and offer to bail you out, right? No, Daddy, no. That's not what I meant at all. Although maybe, maybe you could just help me to find a job, just in case Mother doesn't change her mind. Or you do know everybody around here. Mm -hmm. There's a quarter. Go out to the street, get the machine, get the newspaper, look through the wine ads, pound the pavement. It's a time-honored approach, and believe me, it works. How can you be so cold to me? I am learning to be happy, Dinah, with my life and with Blake. But apparently you haven't learned anything. You're already here for a handout. Oh, I just wanted a job recommendation. How can I possibly give you a recommendation? How could I ask anybody to trust you? When something goes wrong, you lie and manipulate, even after you get caught. I, I won't, Daddy. I promise. Don't promise. Just do it. Right now is a golden opportunity to make things right. Now, if you don't mind, I have work to do. I understand. Bye, Daddy. straighten her out. Please, dear God, make it work. I, uh, Dr. Barrow was just telling me uh, about a, uh... One of Annie's patients isn't doing very well. She takes it personally. Oh, she takes it personally. Well, that happens to be one of the things that I love about her the most. Did she, uh, did she tell you our, our wonderful news? Uh, Rick did, actually, that you were getting married. Congratulations. Yes. Thank you very much. Can I steal her for just one, one second? I mean, I just want to talk to her just for a second. Sure. You'll be all right? Mm -hmm. Thank you very much. Listen, um... Yeah? I came by here because I wanted to tell you that you don't have anything to worry about, all right? I'm going to talk to Ross. Oh, he said he could do it. I don't think it's going to be a big problem. You right. know? I mean, having Reva... Having Reva declared dead is just one of those weird technical things we have to get through. Nothing's going to come between us, okay? Well, that's good news. So, see you later. You bet. So long, Dad. Thank yep. you. You're stuck. You know, you may be my boss, and you can fire me if you want, but that doesn't give you the right to make me feel guilty, and, and, and not wreck either. That's not what Rick wants. He has no right running to you about our private lives. He didn't come running to me about anything. He was angry. <gasps> you were hurting. Why can't people just let the past be the past? Am I going to have to pay my entire life for this mistake? I already made one big mistake. Let's not make another one, okay? What do you want from me? I have accepted your apology. Honesty. I want honesty. I am being honest. No, you're not. This is honest. I used to hate Fletcher. I didn't exactly hate him as a person. I just hated the idea of you two being in love. And when I heard that you were going to get married, I, I came up with all sorts of scenarios on how to get rid of him. 
Do we have to bear our souls? You know, it is considered thoughtful not to say things that will hurt the other person. But I'm not trying to hurt you, Mom. This is important. There's a big part of me that wanted you to work it out with Dad. Because I thought if you got married to Fletcher, Dad would lose it again. He'd go riding off another road into a ravine and maybe the next time wouldn't be so lucky. Well, you don't have to explain to me why you care so much about your father. I've gotten used to that from you. You're, you're telling me that, that it didn't hurt when I walked out of the middle of your wedding vows to go after Dad? I didn't even notice you were gone. I can take the truth, Mom. I oh, want the truth. Oh, my damn it. You want the truth? I'll give it to you. You waltzed out on me in the middle of the most important day of my life. That was extremely inconsiderate, extremely rude and embarrassing. You hurt me deeply. Finally. You love your father. I have known that all your life. Even when we thought he was dead, you loved his memory more than you ever cared about me. Oh, Mom. No, come on. You don't get to pick which part of the truth you want now. You ask for the truth, you get the whole mess. Okay. I thought, finally, you realized what kind of a man he is, what he is really capable of. I did. I do. What he says, what he does, is always about him. Always. Even my wedding had to be interrupted so that Roger could be the center of attention. For once, I would have appreciated your standing by me instead of supporting his tiresome, selfish behavior. Yeah, I would have appreciated that. So there, is that honest enough for you? Wow. For somebody with no practice, you're sure pretty good. Thank you. You're right, I was thoughtless. And and childish. I have an old habit of worrying about Dad. Next time, I'll try to... I hope there will not be a next time. Well, if there is, I promise I will think twice before I do the same thing. <laughs> Good. I'm sorry, Mom. I really do love you. Oh, me. <laughs> I love you, too. Oh, thank you. I feel so much better now. <laughs> uh, I think we should celebrate. No. I'm going to throw you and Fletcher a party tonight. No, you don't have to do that. Oh, yes, really. I want to do that, Mama. I think we should, I think we should start this all clean, clean slate. Well, yes. I, I'll let me run it by Fletcher and see if... Fletcher, I'm throwing a party for you and Mom tonight. Be there, no excuses. <laughs> Towers. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Tuxedo, jeans, or how about these trousers? I've only worn them two days. Oh, nice legs. If you're going to be in our family, you can't wear those. <laughs> okay. This is trying to spare you a lot of heartache. I don't believe you. I've seen what happens to kids when doors are slammed in their faces. That may be, but there's no similarity between these situations. Hart did not engineer his own kidnapping. And besides that, he had some very good reasons for leaving Springfield. You mean me? All right, fine. Suspect my motives, but not my advice. Let Dinah back into the family. You have seen the sort of friends she chooses when she's left to her own devices. Yes. I'm afraid I have. Well, I was thinking of someone like Victor Pachinoff, someone who is truly dangerous. What is your point, Roger? What is your point? Dinah needs her family now. Uh, look, I'm not saying to hand her anything on a silver platter. Make her earn it. For instance, you could give her her job back. She doesn't like her job. She doesn't want her she job. She feels differently now. Give her a chance. Let her learn by watching a truly competent, responsible woman functioning in the real world. At the same time, you can keep an eye on her. And this is all designed to spare me the pain of an estrangement from my daughter? And help her learn a little bit about responsibility, yeah. You're lying. You're lying. This has nothing to do with Dinah holding down a job. You're nervous about how close your daughter and I have become, aren't you? <laughs> no, I'm not at all. I know my daughter well enough to know that she would never... Dinah and I have grown quite fond of each other.
get out. I'm not one of your servants. You don't order me around. Get out. Where's your gratitude? Huh? Remember me? I'm the guy who brought your boyfriend back to you safe and sound. Oh. Okay. <laughs> Fine. Why don't you name me your price? Just tell me exactly what it is I need to give you so that you will stay out of my life forever. Ten thousand? No. Twenty. Okay. Oh, a little more. Well, that's all right with me because whatever it takes, I will be very, very happy to give. for help when you were desperate about Dinah and Matt, but I'm not good enough to take a personal interest in your daughter. What exactly is going on between you and Dinah? If you were closer to your daughter, you might already know. Don't think about it, Roger. Don't even think about laying a hand on her, or I swear you will regret it. What's going on here? Ah! Enter the young hero to the rescue. We'll continue with part two of Guiding Light in a moment. Sorry, what, what, you said you had something, some papers or something that you wanted to bring over? Yeah, yeah, I, um, uh, I have a prenuptial agreement for us both to sign. Have a what? Yeah, I, I talked it over with Ross. Are you serious? You didn't say anything about it to me. Yeah, well, um, actually, the other day when Ross and I stopped by and, and Dinah came in and gave her confession, uh, I was going to tell you, but it, it sort of got forgotten about. I, I don't want something like that. Well, well, it's pretty straightforward. It basically says that anything that you come into this marriage with, you... Uh, you keep if something happens, and the same goes for me. But that's not necessary. No, I, I know it's not necessary. I just, I just want to go into the marriage with everything up front and on the table, and I think this makes it perfectly clear. But, honey, I love you. I want you to have everything that I have. Well, just having your love and, and being with you is enough for me. I don't need the money. I can't do that. I, I can't go to a marriage with this. Well, I can't go into the marriage without it. Josh, come in. I need you to sign one piece of paper for me. No problem. No problem at all. I told Andy that this was just a technicality, right? I mean, just a little bit of red tape we got to get through? Ordinarily, yes. That's OK. Well, I'm ready to get the ball rolling then. OK, I'm where do I sign? Uh, understand that the reason we're here and the reason we're doing that is that Reba's body was never recovered. I understand. And we're going to get affidavits to that effect. In the meantime, if you could sign right at the bottom there, we'll file that, because I know you want to get things expedited. OK, all right. I brought this uh, for you. Oh, um, good. What is it? I just thought it might help. It's uh, all the missing person reports that have been filed, you know, all the places I went looking for Reba. You've been pretty much everywhere. Yeah. Yeah, I spent about five years. No luck, though. Uh, obviously, she never came out of that water. You did everything you could, Josh. Yeah, I, um... I I'm sorry, I just... <laughs> I just really hate this, you know. I, I, it's like... <clears throat> It's like I have to live Reva's death all over again, only only this time it's without the hope that I had before. It's just kind of difficult, that's all. I understand. It's not easy. Yeah. I mean, it's not like it's about property or money or anything like that. I mean, I wouldn't be doing this if it weren't for the fact that it's coming between me and Annie right now. Uh, I understand. But, but I know that we just have to get through this and everything will be okay. Can, can, can you just give me um, a ballpark figure, perhaps. I mean, how long before I can marry Annie, exactly? Josh, you have to face the possibility that the court could deny this petition. 
Wait, wait a minute, what are you talking about? Why would they deny this petition? Reed is obviously dead. Well, normally it takes seven years for the court to accept the fact that seven missing person years. is deceased. Yes, yeah, seven years. Okay, Reeve has been dead for five years. You're telling me... I'm telling you that you may have to wait the final two years. Um, iced tea, please. Yeah. Lemon? Well, my visit with Daddy was a total disaster, so please tell me you had better luck with my mother. Please tell me that. I told you to approach your father delicately. I did. I was very careful, and I really meant everything that I was telling him, but he still rejected me. Uh, no, that, that's very nice. Thank you. Um, so, come on, tell me about my mother. She's a cold, cold woman. Oh, she really hates me, doesn't she? Let's just say there are no openings at Lewis Oil at the present time. You know, it's one thing to be turned down when you're not trying, but when you are trying, it's just not fair. Welcome to the real world. Well, what did she say? I think she shouldn't have. About me? Not everything is about you, Dinah. I'm sorry. I thought that was what you meant. She treated me with contempt. After all I've done for her, she just acted as if I were nobody, and she will regret it. Yeah, well, she's like that sometimes, you know. She's snobby, but don't let it get to you. You're still going to try to fix things for me, right? I have tried, Dinah. It's not going to work. Well, then you'll help me get by. I'm not sure that would be a good idea. You said you would, Roger. I think it might be a mistake for me to bail you out again. Oh, you sound just like my father. I'm thinking of you, Dinah. No, you're not. You know, you told me you were going to see my mother to help me, but obviously there was some other reason, wasn't there? Thank you. You have an overactive imagination. No, my father warned me that you only help people unless there's something in it for you. So I guess you're doing that to me, too. Don't be foolish. Your father hates me. He'd do anything and say anything to get you to hate me, too. Of course I've been thinking of you. Well, I have been all along. It doesn't sound that way to me. Listen, independence is character building. I don't want to build my character. I want money, and I want a roof over my Maybe head. Maybe so, but what you need is a little time on your own to learn to prioritize. I will even work. I'll work. I could work for you. You own a TV station. So what skills would you be intending to bring to WSPR? Well, uh, I could be a weather girl. All they do is point and look good, and they're wrong about the weather at least half of the time. I could do a better job just by guessing. Come on, Roger, say yes. <laughs> I'll think about it. What? Now, where are you going? I, I have a meeting. Her. Roger, please, don't walk out on me. I don't know what I'm going to do. Diana, you'll be fine. You have resources you haven't even begun to tap. I'll see you soon. <laughs> what <local friend. laughs> no, who's that man? Don't you want to know? Don't you want to know? Don't you The worst thing that ever happened to me in my entire life was Reva's death. It took me a long time to accept the fact of it. And I just want to get on with my life. I have been greatly blessed now with a woman who wants to spend the rest of her life with me and my children. I just don't want to wait any longer. I know that, and I'm going to do everything possible. I appreciate that. But it's not entirely up to you now, is it? I mean, the bottom line is there's going to be some judge somewhere who's going to deal with this who doesn't know anything about me or my children or Annie. Never knew Reva. If this fails, there is another way. What are you talking about? I'm talking about if the court does not accept the petition that Reva is now deceased, you can file for divorce. <laughs> On what grounds? Desertion. This just gets more and more bizarre, doesn't it? I know, but what it means is 
You only have to wait one year instead of the two. All right. Whatever. Whatever it takes to get it done. I... As long as Annie and I end up together. I have to be with Josh. Rick cannot wreck this for me. Look, Rick isn't going to tell Josh that you two were married, and he's not going to tell him that the reason the marriage broke up was because of your drinking. He told you that? Yes, he did. How am I supposed to believe that? He had no problem telling you. Concerning the fact that you were married, he told me because I am his father. Now, about the drinking, he didn't tell me anything. I ran into you at an AA meeting. You understand. You know what drinking does to somebody. You're not so quick to judge. I also know what lying does to us drunks. I am not going to pick up a drink. Don't you try to con me. I mean, this disease is all about isolation and secrets. Until you start dealing with that, you're just changing seats on the Titanic. I... I'm trying to be honest. You're only as sick as your secrets, right? Hey, you said it, not me. I admit. I admit I did some horrible things to Rick. I admit that, and, and I didn't want to. I, I didn't know what I was doing. I am not here to lecture you. Everything you have done, I have also done only worse. I'm not going to tell you what to do. You're just going to hold it over my head until I tell Josh. Is that how it works? Uh. We ask for the courage to change the things we can change. Now, you are on your own. You either make things right or not. You followed us there, Copper Mountain. It's a very special spot for us. It's where we first became involved, so to speak. Chrissy know you're back? Yeah, Chrissy does know we're back. She's throwing a party for us tonight at the Towers. So you see why we don't have too much time to shoot the breeze. Excuses, please. I'm not paying that. That's Roger Thorpe's bill. I came back. <laughs> Aren't you the same guy who just did a complete about face and completely blew me off a minute ago? I shouldn't have. Don't be in. Well, if you came back because you're feeling sorry for me, don't bother. I'll pity you. Never. I can survive, you know. I did it before I came back to Springfield, and I can do yes, it again. of course you can. But why do it alone when you have me? Look, I made a mistake. I was way too hard on you. I realized it when I was halfway out the door. I care much too much for you to let you slip away. Will you please accept my apology? I don't know if I can. I think I've thought of a way to help you. Ed, Ed, could you take a look at these requisitions for me? And you want to tell me when you last slept in your own bed? What? <laughs> I meant, uh, you've been taking on a lot of extra shifts here. I know the hospital can get along without you, at least for a few hours, I think. I don't much like going home. The place is too empty. Yeah, when I tell people that, they always say I can get a cat. They just don't get it, do they? I can't get a cat. I'm allergic. Okay, I'm going to take these down to purchasing. Mm -hmm. Will I see you at um, Holly and Fletcher's thing tonight? Or are you going to take some time off? Oh, that's tonight. That's right. Blake told me about that. Uh, 
Yeah, I guess so. Okay. Listen, um... We gotta go to this thing, and I don't want to go alone, so maybe we could go together, you know, uh, just take one car instead of two? I mean, unless you've already got a ride, you're going with somebody? No, no, I, mean... I don't, I don't, and that, that would be nice. Great. Thanks. I'll pick you up. Okay. All right, take care. Very nice. Vanessa, you have worked hard for everything you have, and I just don't feel like I'm entitled to any of it, that's all. Yeah, but I, I, I mean, I disagree with that. You're marrying me. You're marrying the whole package. You get everything, including my headaches. We are talking about a lot of money. Money that your family has worked hard for for generations. Did you talk to Daddy about this? <laughs> I don't need to talk to your father to know what's right. Well, I just, I know all about that stuff, but I don't think for us there's any good reason for it. Think about what happened when my father came to town. He heard we were getting married, he rushed right into town, and he was expecting to cash in on us. Now, I... just trust me on this. I know how people think, and I know what they talk about. I don't care. I don't care what petty people think and talk about. I don't want that. Want to get it? Sure. <laughs> yeah. <clears throat> yes, Vanessa Chamberlain. Hi, Vanessa, it's Blake. Oh, hi, Blake. Uh, look, this isn't a very good time. Can I get back to you? Oh, well, actually, no, it'll only take a minute. Listen, can you and Matt come tonight to the Towers Club um, for a dinner party? I'm, I'm throwing one in honor of Mom and Fletcher's marriage. Well, I think so. Um, just hang on a second. Listen, do you want to uh, go to a dinner party later on for, for Holly and Fletch? Uh, it's up to you. I kind of uh, Blake? Yeah, that sounds nice. What time? Okay. Yeah, see you then. Do you think we could just put that prenuptial problem on hold? I still want to talk about it. I know you do. But let's just go out tonight and have a good time and talk about it later. So what is your plan to help me? Oh, it's beautiful. Oh, I love the back. Roger. I think it's going to do nicely. Well, I have to get you some shoes, of course. Then we'll stop by a jeweler's and pick out a necklace. I thought emerald. You were buying me that outfit? Oh. You're going to make me the weather girl after all. Oh, Roger. Thank you. Although I don't think they're usually that dressy. Hush, hush. I'll explain it all later. Come on, we've got a lot to do. Well, well at least tell me what this plan involves. I'll tell you this much. It's going to get you exactly what you want. Trust me. And then, and then, and then she says... Yeah, yeah. How did it get in there? <laughs> you get it? You get it? Oh, no. <laughs> Actually, we could celebrate your engagement to a good way. I still say that's a knockout ring. Thanks, Floyd. You have to excuse me. I have about a zillion things to do. So. Okay, grab a drink. Come over here for a second. Yeah. How did it go with Lars? Um, well, he's he's uh, filing the petition. So, uh, Great. So it shouldn't take long. Mm. Uh, yeah. Right. Honey. It's a good man's feeling. I know. <laughs> Listen, I just I just want to say that I think it's really good that you keep your mind off Dinah tonight, all right? Because you've done the right thing, and it's all going to turn out. I live in hope, my dear. Good. You're a sweet kid. Thank you. Have I told you I loved you, Lily? About an hour ago. Uh, all right. Well, you can wait until next week. No, I don't think so. <laughs> I love you. I love you, too. I love you here, too. Ooh. <laughs> <laughs> Vanessa, listen, I'm going to go greet them. Okay. Matt, Vanessa, hi. hi. Thank you for coming. Oh, yes. Uh, just... Wow, Blake. <laughs> nice spread you have here. Listen, Matt, I really want to thank you for, for telling Ross the truth about Dinah. It's okay. It meant a lot to me. I think you saved our marriage. I don't like it either, Vanessa. Look, Roger is definitely up to something. I don't know what, but... Roger is always up to something. Look, I owe you a big apology. I should never, never have gone to him for help. 
I'm sorry I was right, but maybe this isn't a minor key. Maybe it's just trying to get under your skin. Well, I hope you're right. Here they are, the conquering duo. You look beautiful. Doesn't you she? Oh, well, thank you. Absolutely. It's blowing so much in here that we all need sunglasses. You don't know the good news that Josh and Annie got engaged. You really? Did? Josh? Oh, could, really? Yes. Congratulations. Thank you very much. Thanks. Thank you. Thanks. How much for your living I'm sorry, I don't I bet I could get you a good deal on the Bauer wedding chapel. You too, Vanessa. Okay, I think it's a great idea. Please, everybody, if we could have a seat at this moment, please. Everybody, find a chair. Do we have any place? You too, Lily. You can sit wherever you wish, man. Get across. <laughs> Dearly beleaguered, we are gathered here to raise our glasses to Holly and Fletcher. Here, here. Oh, here, here. Here, here. <laughs> Well, I am just bewitched by the way you look. Well, thank you. And thank you for buying this dress for me. It's beautiful. I love everything that you got for me. As a matter of fact, I don't know how I'm going to be able to repay you. Hmm. Hmm. Well, a kiss would suffice. <laughs> sure. Ollie and Fletcher, we wish you a long and happy life filled with... This has been Guiding Light. Fashion show hats provided by Anne Marie Millinery of New York City.